All right, I want to talk again here about pace uh, 1110, the second pace in the geometry, and uh, particularly here on page 21. I know a lot of times I've had to sit with students and kind of go through this problem, and one of the reasons is uh, they're going to start doing this a lot throughout the pace, uh, this pace and the next several paces, where they'll take a black and white photograph and then try to identify a geometric shape on top of that and then have you um, <clears throat> use that information to do a proof below. And what I have found really helpful is to just get a piece of scrap paper, okay? Uh, just junky old paper, but take the diagram that they give and draw it without the photograph behind it, okay? <laughs> Seriously, that helps. Then let's analyze the information that they give and figure out, you know, what can we mark on here that we know. So one of the first things they tell us <clears throat> is that ABC is isosceles, and we know that AB is congruent to AC. So we'll put a single tick mark on both of those sides to indicate those two sides are congruent. Now it also tells us that AM bisects BAC. And so we know from the definition of an angle bisector that if it bisects, then this angle here must be equal to that angle. That's the definition of bisecting. So they told us that. Because they told us that, we're gonna, we have to use that, all right? <clears throat> Then, um, now we do know that this angle down here is congruent to this angle. That's also by definition of isosceles. But uh, I don't know that we're going to use that in this proof. I think marking these two sides and then taking this information and marking these two angles as being congruent. Now I'm looking here on page 21. Um, obviously the first reason, that's always easy, right? You can just write given for that. So that's easy. And then the second one, BAM, is congruent to CAM. And it says definition of, and what do you think that's the definition of? How do we know these two angles are congruent? Okay, right here it is. Definition of angle bisector. Now number three, oh, there's an easy one, okay? They give you the step. So this is easy. AM is congruent to AM, so reflexive property, right? So that's, we should, we should be able to identify that pretty easily. Now, they make the statement for, therefore, BAM, okay, so this triangle is congruent to CAM, this triangle. Now we're gonna use one of those four choices, remember? Side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, um, so which one of these do you think it looks like is going to prove that these two triangles are congruent? Well, it looks like we have two sides congruent to two sides, and this angle is included between those two sides. So this will be the side angle side, SAS, okay? Now my favorite one, all right? And this is one of the ones where they get to, where they let you just use an abbreviation. So we can now say that this line segment down here, BM, is congruent to CM. And the reason CPT, whoops, CPCTC, CPCTC, there's a mouthful for you of letters, but congruent parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And just think about that just for a second. What does that mean again? That means that if I have congruent triangles, okay, then the corresponding parts, I should say the corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. There we go. So this part here corresponds to this part. And so therefore they must be congruent. So corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. I could say that this angle down here is congruent to this angle, okay? So the corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, and we thankfully can just write the abbreviation, and we don't have to write that out every time. But we do want to think about what it means, all right, and make sure that we're using it accurately. I'm going to let you um, 
that the next few are not as confusing because they don't have the picture with it. And so it's just a diagram and they give you the statement and then you just have to come up with the reason, okay? Now, when you get to page 22, um, at the top, I want you to try to do that one on your own, okay? The, obviously, the first step is easy. It looks like step three is probably going to be proving the triangles are congruent. And then step four, these two parts must be corresponding parts. So we're probably going to use this one again. So we see a pattern here. So there's only one statement you have to come up with. And I think you can probably come up with that one just by looking at the diagram. But make sure you mark the parts before you start. And then I'm going to start another video to kind of walk through the challenge problem because I know that one can be a bit challenging.